my dear business friends i address you as business friends because i had been in business for number of years and i know the pleasures of being successful in business at the same time the pains in business vicissitudes are bound to come in life there is nobody in the world even the most powerful person of the world in politics most powerful person in business most powerful person in education have to face many a times in life undesirable things happening it is impossible that someone will keep on facing only desirables only desirables not possible the world is such ups and downs are bound bound to be there and if you become very highly elated whenever something very wonderful has happened in the life when we are very successful in our attempt to make money or make our position or power or status high and then we have deep depression when we find that we are not successful or something undesirable has happened then life is not really happy a real happy life is that one remains equanimous in every situation smiling at every situation not a smile just to show to others look i am smiling from deep inside one keeps on smiling oh now this situation has come let me see how long it lasts there is no situation in the world or in the life of anybody which remains eternal bound to change sooner or later bound to change accepting this reality merely at the intellectual level or accepting this reality at the emotional level or devotional level because you have got great faith in the words of somebody does not help at the actual level if you have practiced if you have experienced again and again what is happening within yourself what is happening within yourself and you train your mind to remain equanimous with everything that you experience within yourself then you are a balanced minded person and i with my experience know that the capacity to work the capacity to make decisions right decisions increases when the mind is confused when there is agitation in the mind most of the time you hesitate to make a decision i am talking with my experience you hesitate whether this will be good or that will be good oh no 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 that will be much better oh no there is a risk better that confused mind cannot take a quick decision cannot take a right decision so the capacity to work capacity to get good results becomes less less and when the mind is tranquil peaceful no agitation then let any problem come the problem is there and so soon you go to the depth of the problem you know the solution from deep inside you know the solution a right decision a quick decision and the habit pattern of the mind which time and again becomes very miserable that habit pattern changes very miserable i know my own case when i was involved in business it's good nothing wrong in getting involved in business nothing wrong in making money honestly without harming others nothing wrong 
as a householder, one should not go around and ask money from others. You have to work hard, earn money for your livelihood, maintain your maintenance, maintenance of those who depend on you, and so also for the good of the society. But if you don't know how to enjoy, then all the money, all the prestige, the power, the status does not give the real happiness, does not give the real happiness. I know when I used to fail in certain attempt, say I submitted a tender to the authorities or the government or the buyer and I lost it. If I had lost it, that was not very painful to me. But when I find I lost it because my competitor got it. Oh, horrible, my competitor, he got it. Whole night I can't sleep. So much of worry. Oh, my competitor. He is one inch taller than me. I can't bear that. I have my millions all right. But because I failed in this particular attempt, I feel so depressed, so distressed, no sleep. And I also remember, in any attempt, in any deal, I was successful. Wonderful, I am successful. Whole night, no sleep, can't sleep. Whole night I keep on planning. Ah, this attempt, I got so much. Now, next attempt. Next time I will do like this, and do like this, and more money, and more money. Whole night I can't sleep. What kind of life? When you are successful, you are not, not happy. When you are unsuccessful, you are not happy. Because the habit pattern has become such. You always want to be as I wanted to be. One inch taller than everybody else, at least taller than everybody else whom you know. How can this fellow be taller than me? I am the tallest person. That madness of ego, it makes no difference. You are a billionaire, not millionaire, say billionaire. And that is quite sufficient for you. You compare yourself with those who have less money and you say, look, I have so much. My bank balance is so much. The prices of my stocks is so much. I got fleets of car. I got my own, own aeroplane, jet plane, things like this. Yes, you feel so high. The moment you come to know that somebody who was just ordinary person, I knew him from my school days or college days, now look all of a sudden, Oh, this person has become a tycoon. I can't bear. Why? Your position remains the same. Your capital remains the same. Your share market price remains the same. And yet you become so miserable. This tendency of jealousy. Instead of that, if I have sympathetic joy, ah, look, a friend of mine has grown so much. Ah, wonderful. I am so happy to see him happy. I am so joyful to see him joyful. But it is easy to give such sermons. It is easy to listen such sermons. But in actual practice, I have found very difficult, very difficult. All the time, mind remains agitated, agitated. Just to come out of that agitation, just to come out of that pain, I may divert my attention somewhere else, which I used to do. Divert my attention to this sensual pleasure or that sensual pleasure or something which can keep me happy for some time. But how long? That is gone and again, I am the same agitated person, miserable person. Very fortunately for me, very fortunately, I came in contact this wonderful exercise, mental exercise. As your physical exercise is to keep your body healthy and strong. This mental exercise, physical exercise like jogging or walking or 
say in yoga, yoga, asanas, pranayams, that's universal. It is scientific. It keeps your body healthy, strong. Exactly in the same way, when I got this technique, I found it is so scientific to observe the interaction of mind and matter. What is happening within me? That part is always missing. All the time, what is happening outside? What is happening outside? That becomes so predominant that what is happening within me is lost. And this technique, this procedure, this exercise wants you observe what is happening in you. You generated anger, hatred, ill will, animosity because something undesirable has happened outside. Somebody has insulted you or uh, abused you or uh, something has happened we don't like and you generate hatred, aversion. And while you are generating hatred, aversion, your mind at the surface level keeps on rolling. Rolling in the thoughts, so and so said like this, so and so did like this. It so happened, such an undesirable thing, that is giving more fuel to the fire that you started burning inside. But if you learn observing the reality within yourself, you are aware of something happening outside. Yes, you can't close our eyes and run away from that. That's the reality. Reality outside. But what reality inside? Whenever I react with any negativity, anger, hatred, ill will, animosity, lust, ego, any negativity, I will notice. I am the first victim of this negativity. I harm others later on. First I harm myself. I generate anger to punish somebody. Somebody behaved like this, so I am angry. Unless I am angry, how can I teach him a lesson? That's the way in which the mind goes. That is the way in which the mind was uh, uh, trained. This is the habit pattern of the mind. But what happened to me? When I generate anger or hatred or ill will, what is happening to me? And you will notice, as I noticed, a number of people who are practicing, they notice, Lot of burning, heat, heat throughout the body, tension, palpitation increases, and you find I am so miserable. What am I doing? I am harming myself. I want to harm others. But instead of harming others, I am harming myself. First I harm myself, then only I harm others. I can't harm anybody without first harming myself. Universal law of nature, which is there. But because one does not experience this truth, one keeps on harming oneself, keeps on harming oneself, generating this defilement or that defilement, and becoming miserable, and strengthening this habit pattern of reacting, reacting with defilements, reacting with defilements, generating a lot of tensions, misery, misery. How to come out of that misery? In spite of all the money and all the position, the power, the status that I used to have and many of my friends are having, life is not that happy as it should be. After all, we earn money for, money for what? To live a happy life, real happy life. Not temporary happy life, which passes away. A real happy life, which keeps us happy in every situation, ups and downs, vicissitudes, so what? I work. If I'm not successful, I smile, not successful, so what? I try again, I try again, always smiling. Mind is always equanimous, does not lose its equanimity, does not lose its equipoise. Life becomes wonderful. You are happy in every situation. But that cannot happen just by listening to discourses, cannot happen just by reading books cannot happen even by intellectualizing it. That happens only when you experience, experience the truth within yourself. That is why sages and saints and seers of the entire world, not only of India but outside also, everywhere, they have all said, know thyself, know thyself. What do they mean by know thyself? Yes, I know myself. I am Goenka. So what? Or I am a bundle of um, 
of uh, matter and mind, so what? At the intellectual level, I may say, a soul in me is myself, or a God in me is myself, because I have got devotion, I accept the words of my scriptures, or my guru, or my teachers, so I say, but no experience. Actually, I do not know what, unless you know yourself at the experiential level, uh, this teaching, or this advice, know thyself, does not work. Know thyself at the actual level. Something has happened outside. Now what is inside? What is happening inside? And you started knowing yourself. Oh, I am a bundle of misery. All the time I keep on generating misery for myself. All the time I keep on generating this defilement or that defilement. What I am doing? Then you start changing your habit pattern. Naturally it starts changing. You won't have to do anything. It just happens. I give example of a child. We say ignorant child. Yes, ignorant. Because this child does not know the rules of the world or nature. And he sees, he looks at some burning charcoal. He's so excited. These are red toys and I must play with them. Runs towards it and mother stops. No, this is fire. It will burn you. Don't go. And he cries, he wants to go, mother stops. Again he tries, mother stops. And it so happens once, mother is not present. So he jumps, goes and catches hold of that burning fire charcoal and cries, oh, it is burnt, cries. He may make such mistake again, twice, thrice. Very soon he will realize, this is burning charcoal. I should not touch it. It is dangerous. It burns me. We who call ourselves adults, we call ourselves very wise compared to that ignorant child. For us it takes little longer time. We keep on burning and we keep on burning and then we keep on feeling also, look, I am burning. Oh, I have generated hatred. I am burning. I have generated animosity. I am burning. And nobody wants to feel, have the feeling of burning. Nobody wants to feel misery miserable, what I am doing? You have one experience, you have two experiences, three experiences, because you are wise and because you are adult, you will take perhaps hundred experiences to come out of it. The child takes just two or three, comes out of it. But experience is necessary, you don't experience at all. You are always happy at the surface level of the mind, which keeps on rolling in the thoughts, 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 does not experience. It can't experience what is happening within you. And that is why saintly people said, know thyself. When my teacher also said, know yourself at the experiential level and gave me a technique. This is how you can know yourself at the experiential level. What, what a big change. What a big change. Nobody wants to live a miserable life. And yet, out of ignorance, out of the Ununderstanding of the truth, one keeps on generating nothing but misery, nothing but misery. And when that becomes clearer and clearer at the experiential level, naturally the mind starts changing its habit pattern. No, this is not good for me. No, this is not good for me. The law of nature becomes so clear. We may call it the law of the God Almighty, whatever you call. Whenever I defile my mind, I am the first victim. Whenever I generate anger, hatred, ill will, animosity, lust, ego, anything, I become so miserable. And then I start making others miserable. I can't make anybody miserable before making myself miserable. This is the law of nature. Every time when I perform any unwholesome action, vocal or physical, I can't perform an unwholesome action which will disturb others, which will harm others. I can't do that without generating tremendous amount of defilement in my mind. Anger, hatred, ego, some defilement or the other. And law of nature is such that as soon as I generate any defilement, I get punishment then and there. I start suffering from the hellfire. I am sowing the seed of hellfire. This seed of hellfire 
will continue the whole life. Whole life it will keep on giving me misery. Seed is such, the fruit will be such. Hellfire, hellfire. After death, nothing but hellfire. Because the seed is such, the fruit will be so. As you sow, so you will reap. And when by this technique I found that one comes out of these defilements, a pure mind, again by nature, a pure mind is always full of love, full of compassion, full of goodwill. You want to train your mind for that. As, as, as much as it becomes pure, that much it gets full of love, compassion, goodwill, only positive, positive. And then you notice again the law of nature. Whenever you find your mind is free from negativities, it is pure, full of love and compassion, nature starts reward, rewarding you. Or we can say the God Almighty starts rewarding you. We are punished the moment we break the law of the nature. We get punishment then and there, we become miserable. And we are rewarded the moment we train our mind to remain equanimous, pure, full of love, full of compassion. We start experiencing the kingdom of heaven within, the kingdom of heaven within. So much of peace, so much of harmony, so much of happiness. And the seed, now this seed, seed of happiness, purity, love, compassion, will bring nothing but the kingdom of heaven later on. This becomes so clear by experience, not because the guru says so, the teacher says so, or the scripture says so, but your own experience, you find the habit pattern is changing, a depth of the mind, where the source of impurities or the source of purities arise, you are now with that. Every time something happens at the depth of the mind, not at the surface of the mind, at the depth of the mind, what is happening? And then when you experience that anything wrong that happens there brings me misery here and now and also misery for future. And anything good that arises in me gives me happiness here and now and happiness for future. Whether a rich person or a poor person makes no difference. Law of nature is law of nature. Whether a highly educated person or uneducated person makes no difference. Whether one of this status or that status makes no difference. Human being is human being. Human mind is human mind. Whenever I defile my mind, the law of nature will not come and examine, hey, is he a rich person or a poor person? He is educated or illiterate? Or whether he belongs to this community or that community? This religion or... Nothing doing. You have to suffer. Then and there the punishment is there. Not that I defile my mind now and punishment will come later. Simultaneously, as the defilement arises, so the misery arises. It doesn't take time. That reality, when one starts experiencing within oneself, a change automatically starts coming. A change coming. Then, another change which comes in our day-to-day -day life. I've been through that, so I know. When we earn money, we've got some status. And to maintain that status, now we say, Oh, I give a lot of donation. Look, I give so much donation. But the donation that I give, with the base of ego, I build a hospital for the society. But mind you, the hospital's name must be Goinka Hospital. Otherwise, the use, what's the use of my giving money? I don't get any name, any fame. I spend so much money. This school, this college, Goinka school, Goinka madness is there. Because you are so much attached to your ego. Otherwise, when the mind changes, the habit changes, every time charity, when you do charity, when you give donation, you feel so happy. A sympathetic joy arises. But somebody so miserable is getting benefit of this charity. Whenever you see people getting benefit of that, you feel so joyful. No ego. No ego. It's a sympathetic joy. You find people joyful. You generate joy in your mind, naturally. And that keeps you always in good health. Good health mentally. And when there's good health mentally, 
there's good health physically also. And these ups and downs, ups and downs, bound to come. Even maybe at the physical level, a very rich person comes across some kind of disease, illness, maybe cancer. A number of cancer patients have taken this, this, this technique of meditation. I don't call it meditation. It's a scientific way of observing the truth, observing the interaction of mind and matter within yourself. It's a science, pure science, nothing else. Now these people who are very miserable because of this particular disease, and when it comes to the terminal stage, the patient is going to die soon. I have got reports, we have got uh, information for more than 10 such cases where the patient has not taken any medicine to become unconscious, have not taken any medicine to get sleep or painkiller, nothing. One observes. The whole technique is to observe. Observe the reality as it is, understanding everything that arises sooner or later passes away. Let me see. Let me see how long it dies, lasts. And these terminal cases, I get report and I feel so happy because they got this wonderful technique and they die smilingly, smilingly, without any fear, without any crying, without being unconscious. A wonderful way of dying, an art of living. Since last 31 years when this technique had been spreading around the world, I keep on getting information. Of course, death is inevitable, sooner or later people die, even vipassana meditators die. But till now, just one or two cases where we are not sure. Otherwise, every vipassana meditator who has died, every vipassana meditator who has died, dies consciously, smilingly, fearlessly. What fear? One feels I am getting promoted, not emotion, not fear. Because the way in which your mind is trained, that makes you happy in every situation. You don't lose the equilibrium of your mind. You don't lose the equipoise of your mind in any situation. And that is the situation where the death is coming. Yet, people say we are happy, let death come any time. Now there is no more fear of death. No more fear of death. I was in Daos last time and then there was a subject that you should not talk about death. Oh no, no, you should not talk. Why not talk about death? Learn how to die and let anybody talk about death, you smile. Yes, let it come to now, this moment, I don't care. I'm happy, I'm ready. I'm ready to go smilingly. But that does not work if you agree only at the intellectual level, deep inside at the actual level. If you learn how to remain equanimous in every situation. I have with my own experience and the experience of thousands of others who are passing through this technique. It's a wonderful way of life. You know the art of dying and that is possible only when you learn art of living. Art of living, one must be perfect in art of living. You get the, the technique which will teach you art of dying. Happy and peaceful now, and nothing but happiness and peace for future. May all of you who have taken time to come to this meeting to listen, if there is any technique. Technique not to convert you from one organized religion to another organized religion. This technique has nothing to do with conversion. Nothing to do. Of course, conversion is there, but converting you from misery to happiness. Converting you from bondage to liberation. Converting you from cruelty in the mind to all the compassion, love. Big change comes. And that is what is needed to live a good life. Good life for oneself. Happy life for oneself and also for others. Whenever I defile my mind, I become miserable, law of nature. And I don't keep this misery limited to myself. I start generating very unhealthy vibration in the atmosphere around you, around me. 
Anybody who comes in contact with me at that time becomes miserable. When I generate anger or hatred or ill will, anybody who comes in contact with me is a miserable person. He becomes miserable. The whole atmosphere is so tense. Instead of that, if I learn how to smile in every situation, how to generate nothing but pure love, compassion, goodwill, I am a happy person, peaceful person. And I give vibration of happiness, of peace in the atmosphere around. Anybody who comes in contact at that time feels very happy, very peaceful. So the whole technique is how to live, how to live a peaceful life, harmonious life, good for myself and good for others. I must be out of all misery within myself and I must help others to come out of misery. For that purpose this wonderful technique was discovered 2600 years ago and it worked in those days. It is working now also and the law is applicable to one and all. One may belong to this community or that community, this country or that country, this color or that color, this religion or that religion. Makes no difference at all. Human being is human being. Human mind is human mind. You have some physical exercise to keep your body healthy, strong. This is a mental exercise which will keep your mind healthy and strong. You have taken time to come here. If there are any questions, you are free to ask me. I would like that understanding it at the intellectual level may inspire you to give ten days of your life and learn this technique for your good, for your benefit, and so also for the good and benefit of so many others.